In a late-night tweet last summer, billionaire tech mogul Elon Musk outlined perhaps his most audacious, not to say Bond villain-esque, plan to date. That plan? Nuke Mars. Was it a joke? Perhaps. It certainly sold a few t-shirts. But bear in mind Musk had already floated the idea of detonating a thermonuclear device on Mars on television some four years before. And whether or not you take him at his word, it's certainly worth exploring his company SpaceX and its ambition to colonize the Red Planet. So today, we're asking the question, what will SpaceX do when they arrive to Mars? First up, let's ponder how serious Elon Musk actually is about getting to Mars. The simple answer is, he's very serious. While the billionaire's most famous venture is probably electric car giant Tesla, his rocket company SpaceX was founded all the way back in 2002, with the express vision of bringing down the cost of travelling to Mars. And he's made no secret of the fact that he's in rather a hurry to get there. We need to get to Mars as soon as possible because we don't know when something is going to happen to the Earth, he stated publicly, also suggesting humanity would do well to colonize Mars before World War III. To this end, SpaceX has invested billions of dollars on the problem of how to not only make it to Mars, but how to get there in a sustainable and cost-effective manner. The plan, as it currently stands, really is quite spectacular. First, a fully reusable spacecraft currently in development with the unabashedly sci-fi working title Starship will be the workhorse of early Mars missions, able to carry in excess of 100 metric tons of payload all the way to the Red Planet and back. Starship will be propelled into orbit thanks to a similarly futuristic booster stage rocket known as the Super Heavy. Super Heavy, designed solely for helping Starship escape Earth's gravity, will be powered by no fewer than 28 mighty SpaceX-designed Raptor engines, 20 to lift Starship into orbit, and 8 to bring the booster stage safely home to Earth in one of SpaceX's trademark show-stopping vertical landings. The reusability of space hardware typifies the SpaceX Mars strategy. Musk himself has repeatedly claimed he finds it absurd that his primary space tech competitors at Lockheed and Boeing don't sell single-use airplanes, but they do sell single-use rockets. Once in orbit, Starship will refuel, most likely from another Starship unit configured specifically for use as an orbital tanker. It will then begin its 100 or so day voyage to the Red Planet. On arrival to Mars, the craft's momentum will be slowed down by the Martian atmosphere. Starship's heat shields will likely suffer some damage or ablation, but that's been factored in by the SpaceX design team. The next thorny problem to overcome is where exactly to land on Mars. And in case you thought the Martian surface, lacking Earth's twinkling oceans and striking coastlines, was all much the same, well, you should think again. After all, the highest mountain in our solar system, Olympus Mons, is found here. One consideration mission planners are already grappling with is the lie of the land. At lower elevations, the atmosphere is thicker, which will help out plenty with a decelerating incoming starship. But a much more important consideration still is the local availability of water. By now, it's fairly common knowledge that liquid water once flowed across the presently barren terrain of Mars. Some of that water remains locked up in ice, and as such, this ice will be an essential necessity for any future colony. The parched throats of future colonists aside, the freedom from having to cart millions of gallons of heavy water across the solar system is pretty helpful to the overall mission. The smart money suggests a landing zone located at less than 40 degrees latitude, which should also be near subsurface water ice deposits and hopefully have as much sunlight as possible for the solar arrays needed to provide power to the nascent colony. The initial landing, very likely unmanned and optimistically scheduled for the year 2024, will need to tackle the problem of refueling using only the Red Planet's natural resources. This is a top SpaceX priority. When deciding upon the ideal type of fuel for their Starship, SpaceX engineers settled on a mixture of subcooled liquid methane and liquid oxygen. For one thing, this ingenious blend burns relatively cleanly, making it easier to reuse rocket boosters time and again. But most brilliantly, using a smart trick of chemistry known as the Sabatier process, this potent fuel can be created from scratch, even on Mars. Developed in France by Paul Sabatier and Jean-Baptiste Sonderons in 1897, the Sabatier process uses a nickel catalyst to synthesize methane from atmospheric carbon dioxide and hydrogen, which can be extruded relatively simply from local Martian water ice. SpaceX engineers have done the math and concluded that the power needed to make this reaction work and generate a useful amount of fuel in around 26 months will require a ground-based array of solar panels that stretch out fully 56,600 square meters. Fortunately, engineers reckon that array could be ferried to Mars within a single Starship payload. And in case you're wondering why Elon Musk, most famous for his holier-than-thou electric car, is so keen on high-polluting rocket fuel, well, as always, he has a good answer. There isn't a way to make an electric rocket, he's said on record. I wish there was, but in the long term we could use solar energy, combine it with water and produce fuel and oxygen right here on Earth. So he'll get around to saving the world just in his own good time. 
Another important early task for those first Martian pioneers will be, in some ways, boring. That is to say, it will involve boring machines. A somewhat lesser-known Elon Musk enterprise here on planet Earth is The Boring Company, which, among its few high-profile endeavors, is currently digging tunnels for a future subterranean transportation network around Los Angeles. In order to access Martian subsurface water, such mining equipment, optimized for weight, will be essential. But moreover, to keep future human colonists safe from the relentless bombardment of ionizing radiation on Mars, early settlements will probably need to be situated in deep, subsurface artificial caves. Sorry if that destroys your vision of gazing out over the rust-colored Martian surface through floor-to-ceiling windows. Yet another Musk invention will come into play once the propellant plant and base is better established. His network of Starlink satellites, currently lighting up the night sky in perfect geometric formations around planet Earth, will likely be deployed into the Martian atmosphere as well, in order to provide vital communication links between colonists on the Red Planet and humans back home. It's not too huge a leap of imagination to imagine autonomous Teslas shuttling around the Martian surface, conducting vital tasks such as ferrying ice to the propellant plants. And while it hasn't been formally confirmed yet by SpaceX, innovative Tesla battery packs have been photographed stacked up at the Starship Production and Testing Facility in Boca Chica, South Texas, a location chosen by SpaceX for its proximity to the equator, which is helpful for big rocket launches. Nuking our Martian neighbors aside, Elon Musk has frequently made predictions about what a future Mars colony would look like. These interjections into the debate have covered lots of topics, including a few cringe-worthy dad jokes about future drinking dens on the Red Planet, or Mars bars as he delights in calling them. More seriously, Elon Musk has also weighed in on the potential political makeup of this brave new world. Direct democracy by the people is Musk's preferred system of governance, outlined in a Twitter post in 2018. Laws must be short, as there is trickery in length, he continues. Automatic expiration of rules to prevent death by bureaucracy. Any rule can be removed by 40% of people to overcome inertia. And freedom. Despite the CEO's blue sky thinking, SpaceX has made it very clear it hopes that, once a base and a means of reliable transportation to and from Earth is established, other parties will need to step in and devise how the colony ultimately unfolds. The most difficult problem, SpaceX has repeatedly said, is getting there and getting back without incident. Other players from the worlds of government, academia and the private sector are needed to make the Martian project a success, hopefully as early as the second half of this decade. So whether or not Elon Musk actually plans on nuking our nearest interplanetary neighbour, if nothing else that would certainly melt some ice, his work will for sure make an explosive impact on the Red Planet.